those, and then off of those you can put uh, instrument platforms, and you plug those into the node, and then off those instrument platforms you can plug in individual sensors, cameras, measuring tools, whatever. And you have live data? And then you have live data that runs, well, you can go to the websites, and then they scientists can run experiments and check on their data from their house and <laughs> things like that. That's cool. Uh, Try going zero, I guess you're 102. It's a little bit more easterly. Oh, yeah, you see there were 32. Sorry, I was looking at Argus. Yeah, I kind of kind of cleared that prow there. Yeah. And I don't think we'll be going down for long. No, because it's just like this flat area, and the trend is going to go back up. Okay, so we'll just now. go. Yeah. We'll just go down it, and then we'll go back up it. Sounds great. Keep my eye out for anything other weird, anything else weird. What's that? I'll keep my eye out for anything else weird. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think we'll just see the other side of it at some point. Off to pretty uh, steep downslope. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Hey, buddy. What's Big rat tail. Yeah. Oh wow. That All was kind of ghostly. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Very mysterious. Oftentimes these critters are loaded up with parasites and things. Probably old, old fishes. Oh, there's still some, uh, <laughs> still, still some in the porch. You can blame another watch. I don't know. If no, that I think that's just you running into the bottom. Yeah, that's just <laughs> me running into the bottom. <laughs> Chasing fish into the sea. Yeah, board. totally. Um, okay. Still really silty here. Yeah. So you poke around, yeah, more northeast. I mean, I'll just stick under Argus as long as we're going downhill, and then when we start going back up. Yeah. Let this move run out, and we can settle out and kind of see because we're gonna like it will get steeper for the next moves after this, so okay. we can line ourselves up correctly. Yeah, we're just not going along the top of the prow; we're just going yeah. along the side. But like, we're going perfectly along the side okay. right now. That's yeah, extraordinary. I, I think it's pretty steep that it gets steeper than this. Yeah. Yeah. Probably more more bouldery. I would guess. Yeah, you can follow me around upslope a little bit here, because I'll just try and stay upslope of her. Yeah. Or stay upslope of Argus, whichever, whichever vehicle I'm <laughs> driving around right now. Questions tonight, or are we? You know, not that many. We already kind of answered the most that we've gotten. But if you're watching, send in our questions or let us know where you are in the world. It's 1 a.m. here, so. 
Yep. We'll usually talk about them. Kind of a slow going at the moment. Just a few corals, rocks. Rusty rocks. <laughs> rocks that are made of a lot smaller rocks. How many ways can we describe the rocks? Um, <laughs> I'm sure you... I, I think my descriptions of rocks are probably better, more descriptive than, uh, than at the start of this year. Learned a bit, come a long way. Well, now you're a rock connoisseur, so mm -hmm. gotta be able to describe them. Very discerning <laughs> rock palette. <laughs> Speaking of rock palette, maybe we should guess how many pounds of rocks we're gonna have across both expeditions. Ooh. We left uh, the end of the first cruise at 898 pounds. And. Uh, we I would hazard a guess to say we've probably collected 200 pounds so far. So maybe in the 1100 range. It's a lot of rocks. And we have this dive plus one more to go. I'll say 12.50. Bob? 12.50 from Video Steve. I think I'm going to go more into the 1400 range. Is this Price is Right rules, or how do we, how um, do we judge the winner? Yeah, let's go with that. Everyone knows those rules, right? Then the what do I say? 12.51. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to adjust our to match you. Zero, six, zero. Just don't be the last person to guess, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bridge, Nav. Or maybe you do want to be the last person to guess. Can you change our bearing to zero, six, zero? The bamboos here seem really happy. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, they They're, they're huge. I like how this one does like some switchbacks. Yeah, it's growing up. Couldn't it, it could indicate some big differences in change of current over time, uh, growing out one direction, 90, ninety degree turn the other direction, another ninety degree turn. I haven't seen anything like that. It's really apparent from this angle. We've, we've sampled these uh, unbranched bamboos a lot in the past, so we have pretty good data about their identity. Um, but the problem is with a lot of bamboos, uh, their species level taxonomy is pretty poor. Um, a lot of species need to be either described or re-described. So we've kind of just been lumping them into groups called clades based on similar characteristics. Gabby, I've got a Herc question for you. Oh, yeah. How many pounds of rocks, or really anything, can Herc carry at once? So that depends on how we ballast the vehicle. So uh, I think Josh said earlier today that the vehicle has about 200 pounds of payload. So that means we can take 200 pounds of weight in water in addition to the vehicle and still achieve positive buoyancy. I feel like always want to be positively buoyant. Um, so if we ballast properly, then we could probably take that many, but we'd also have trouble with space. So it's not just buoyancy, but also space. Um, right now we have three um, plates, 
three weights that we can actually uh, ditch to give us additional buoyancy. So, um, I don't know, we might be able to take, you know, 20 pounds of rocks without ditching plates, I don't know, just as a for instance, and then after that we'd have to ditch plates. And they're, what, 16 pounds per plate? So... In water, yep. So, um, say 20 plus an additional 3 times 16, maybe. Gotcha. Um, but I think we'd start running out of room by then. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Thanks. Is there a big difference between the in-water weight and the in air weight of those plates? Uh, four pounds. Wow. 20, 20 pounds in air and 16 in water. Huh. Mm -hmm. uh, closer to 17. But. Yeah, so we went in probably around 40 pounds light in water. And like maybe you can take up, I don't know, 20 pounds of that and still be able, I don't know, might still be able to come up at a reasonable rate, um, but then you should start ditching plates. Something like that, that's kind of like a guess. Hmm. Is there anything that weighs the same in water as it does in air? Water? <laughs> that's, that's what I was gonna guess. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that too. I knew uh, that's what was coming. <laughs> It's hard for somebody to do that because it displaces the water. How so. do you how do you weigh water in water? did get a chance in uh, several years ago to have a dive in Alvin and uh, the, they let the, sometimes the scientists release the weights, come back up to the surface. It's, it's a bit of a scary moment. So you hear like thuds of the massive piles of weights just being released from the vehicle hitting the seafloor. And uh, yeah, and then you start to drift up slowly, but very kind of hold your breath type of moment. I'm sure it's pretty routine for those who go down frequently, but it's a lot of weights they put on the yeah. sub to get it to go down, like stacks of these plates. Where were you exploring when you were in Alvin? We were diving in uh, off of Catalina Island. <laughs> Okay. Off California. Yeah. Not by choice, by necessity. Um, we were, had some weather and then Navy restrictions um, in the area we wanted to do our operations. So we kind of had to find the next best, pl be next best place. Mm. Okay. Only went down about 700 meters or so. Go for zoom. Still a great sight. So video, Steve, I'm trying a new thing where I turn my gains way down when I'm zoomed in on something. Yep. And I think it's a lot steadier. It looks super steady. Uh, that was a really nice shot in that last um, bamboo coral, the tall one. Yeah, thanks. I think that's like, I think that's just having the gains way down. Also, like, there's not a lot of current right now or anything challenging. Yeah. Mm. Looks great. Okay, go on. I appreciate the tinkering. Me too. Oh, I'm starting to see it wrap around the terrain wrap around in Argus. Oh yeah. So um, have have you now cranked your gains back up to fly around? 
Um, I yeah, exactly. It's at like seventy ish for flying around, and then I just give it like a random yeah. down for yeah. zooming in. Great. Cuskiel. See how well that goes. It'd be cool to have a button like to switch modes, huh? Mm -hmm. Totally. On um, my drone, they have a mode called tripod mode. Okay. So, you know, you have positioning mode where you can fly around all quick and zippy. Yep. Uh, but then when you switch to tripod mode, it really lowers your gains for your all your controls. So you have a maximum speed and oh, okay. maximum gotcha. pan, tilt, all oh, that Oh, interesting. Stuff. Yeah. Neat. And you can just line up shots really carefully. Yeah. Because everybody's instinct when they get on a drone is to kind of like whip around and get high and fast, but things tend to look better when you're going slower. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And on, on all axes. Yeah. Makes it easier not to crash it too. Oh yeah. When yeah. you can only go, you know. Yeah, when you're like sort of getting meter like a second or something. Yeah. So to get those maxes on this vehicle, you'd have to put it in autos and drive through the autos. What's on your mind can there, we, Steve? Can we do a half zoom right there on that route? Yeah. Rock? Ooh, this, go this for is it. a neat tool. I can actually move it around. What are we looking at here? Uh, over here, I thought there was something, but it looks like a patch of sediment. Yep, just just sediment. Okay. So what do you mean? You'd have to go to autos to do to get those maximums. So like, if I put myself in auto head or auto X Y or something, I can still drive with the joysticks. Yeah. Um, but my, uh, I can set a max speed for each of those. Right. Uh. Oh, yeah, I see, I see. Yeah. Because, like, all I'm doing is advancing the goal. Like, for, say, for heading, just advancing the heading goal. Um, and it sets the speed at which you can sort of, it tries to seek out that goal. Right. So halfway on the stick is... A proportion to what you set the max at mm, or no not it's, it's not really and in, in that sense it's yeah i guess uh, so that's what gives you that's what's nice about the control you know you, you have a longer it's definitely still proportional but i don't know that it's exactly like halfway would be halfway to your goal yeah i guess there's different ways to set it up whether yeah. it's like uh a linear line. Yeah, so or, yeah, you can change all those modes in the it drone too. Yeah, it depends on how like it depends on how they wrote the autos, whether it's like um I'm lacking some of the vocabulary for yeah. to describe the the uh So like you can stuff. write one where um you have a goal but and and what the speed is is you you get to that goal by these individual steps. And every time you get to a step, it advances the step again um, and until you get to the goal. And the speed at which it advances the steps is your total speed. But that's not exactly driven by your controls um, in this case. So it's just it's a little more complicated than that. Um, but close, close enough. Um, I think driving in autos and having them limit your speed is a little bit feels clunky in this vehicle it doesn't yeah. it makes it tricky but there's some people who are quite good at it and zoom, really like it zoom on this fuzzy stuff on the yeah, rock again. totally yeah the autos seem like they'd push back they do your controls, yeah it's I'll not never, really i never, don't yeah i don't think they're really like written to do what you're talking about though you can do it that way yeah okay go for zoom we're, we're looking at this um the fuzzy for maybe? Fuzzy, yeah. I think that's still what it is, yeah.
Yeah, that's what it looks like. Okay. All right, almost there. Another. Not really almost there. We still got another. Almost to 30, 32, 50 meters or so till our uh, sampling depth. Okay. It'll probably be mid slope. Yeah. Which will be nice. It should be, able to be pretty easy to find a rock in the slope. So there's no defined, super defined ridge right now, but if we keep heading in the northeast direction, we'll keep ascending the slope and then eventually we'll kind of move more east rather than northeast. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to keep us at 065 for moving Argus. That seems great. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this is going. All right. Looks good in the camera or the sonar, too. Bridge, nav. May we please go 100 meters bearing 065? That is correct. Thank you. Steve, can you tell me a little bit about the monitor that you're looking at over there and how it's different from the ones we might be looking at in the back row? Um, not too much technical detail, but I believe you have essentially computer monitors back there. And I've got a professional video monitor. Okay. Um, Truer color, higher resolution. Yep. Yeah, I, I just I've been thinking about kind of how how the van has been set up between last year and this year. I love the, having the Telestrator back here, but it's not as crisp as looking at some of the big screens. Interesting. Yeah, there's, I heard there's a little bit of lag on that monitor. Tiniest bit, not too bad when you're moving slowly but there's a little bit of motion blur. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was thinking about if I could have any other tools or toys back here, I definitely want like a nice monitor that I could look you know, closely yeah, that's, at. That's, uh, that's good feedback. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's not bad to like have to throw your eyes up at the wall it is kind of far away, and you're when you're looking at things that are very fine, yep. uh, you often miss them across this distance. Steve, um, sorry, science. Steve, have you have you sat at his monitor yet? I have not, but I've always yeah I've always it's heard them talking about astonishing. it. Astonishing. Do you want to try, Steve? It's amazing. I could sit next to you. Uh, yeah, I'll come up in a little bit. Okay. Um, it, it reminds me of kind of the setup they have uh, at. On the Okeanos back row, they have um, one of these professional video monitors in the back row that kind of the science leads huddle around. Go for Zoom. But I, I think it is one of those like really high resolution professional video monitors. You can bring your headset up too. There's a uh, another 
intercom panel up here. A little kink in one of those arms. Oh yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, it's looking super smooth, Gabby. It's definitely better. Like, way better. That was Polykeet Associate. Oh, yeah. There. Go yeah, wide. Worm. Oh, yeah. It's Oftentimes fun. you find these the kind of derms are associated with worms um, live in and around them, kind of cleaning up the feeding. Maybe some large pillows here, boulders. There's still a lot of broken crust. You can see the botryoidal textures. But aside from that, there might be some pillows here that have just been kind of smoothed over by crust over millennia. Gabby, do you have a value for those gains that you can see? Um, it's just a percentage. Okay. But yeah, it's a percentage of the of the normal linear range of input uh -huh. values. And you have that readout on your yeah, monitor? Okay, cool. exactly. So like that time I went down to like 30%. Um, and I like to fly around at like 70, 75% if I'm just trying to make headway. Cool. That's good to know. But like when I... When I've been reducing it, I've just been giving it like a random spin. It seems to land between like 30 and 50. Would there be value in like going to the same percentage to, or is it, um, do you lose that almost, control when you have current, Almost so? certainly, yeah. um, but it's also still workable like this, I yeah, think. Yeah. Tiny sea star. Yeah, I go for zoom. Very tiny. Very cute. Super tiny. Try and have to take a look at that one. I don't don't re immediately recognize it. You want to get in closer? Uh, if you have time. Yeah. There's nothing there else to look at here. That's sorry, sorry, geologist. So, so, so sad. <laughs> that is brutal. <laughs> Looks like we'll have a lot of rock, rocks to collect, though. That's true. Lots of options. Go for zoom. Oh, that is really stinking yeah. cute. <laughs> nice. I think it's a goni asteroid of some type. Okay. Go ahead. On behind a bit. Goni asteroids are typically cookie stars, something known as cookie stars. A lot of different morphologies, though. You better come sit up here, Steve, while there's uh, not much to see. <laughs> not much to see. <laughs> all right, all right. See, and then you'll actually I'll be able to see something. I'll come and look. Do you want to go sit back here and run the watch for a few minutes? Um, I yeah, sure. But <laughs> here we go. You, or I might sit with I might sit with you a minute and uh, show yeah. you the right. con video controls. A Steve switcheroo. Luckily, yeah. there's not much to do with. It's not much to do with Argus right now. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's much more smooth. So why don't we actually switch seats here? Okay. This is um your iris control. 
I don't want to push any buttons. <laughs> oh no, you're gonna. Oh, you're gonna make me do the whole job. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize in advance for all that's gonna happen right now. Oh no, everything's under control here. I think Video Steve just wants to go down and have a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> or run the watch. <laughs> you know, swap places. Okay. So, iris control here. Yep. It's very sensitive. Yes. Got it. So this is what you're adjusting most of the time? Yep. I pretty much keep my hand on that the whole dive. And then here's your zoom control. In mm -hmm. and out. And your focus control right there. Right, right. So usually I zoom, if you want to zoom past the uh, little vignette here on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yep, there you go. Does it feel more clear? Yeah, I like being closer to the monitor. I don't know, maybe it's just used to the monitors at my computer workstation back home, you know, sitting you know, 18 inches away. It's more than just being close to it, though. Like, those monitors are unbelievable. And right. I think, like, one of the big differences with them is, like, a couple zeros in cost. <laughs> Yeah. Literally, I think. I've heard insinuations as to how much they cost. Yeah, I'm sure. And then up here you have like a visual representation of your monitor. Oh, yeah. It's this waveform. And um, yeah, you'll see see how it's getting like really white, almost yeah, blown out. Yeah, right, right. You see the peak, it's peaking up here higher. Yep. Very cool. So is there a particular number you're looking for with uh, iris controller? or just kind of is it something you know you can sense by um, eye? Yeah, it's pretty intuitive. You yeah. want it to look not overly bright, right. not overly dark. And then up here, if there's anything, so this is a percentage on your waveform, 0 to 100. Yep. And if anything's touching down 0, that's going to be like just black, black. And if anything's up, that's white. There's no information there. Right. So ideally, everything is in between those. Yeah. Two. It's a really nice setup. Gonna miss going back to the back row. All right, I'm gonna go back row. See how that goes. <laughs> okay, Steve. Do I call you Science Steve now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is getting confusing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see that this telestrator is a bit. Do you see the lag? Monkey. New Science Steve? Oh, yeah. New Science Steve. <laughs> <laughs> New Science Steve, old Science Steve. <laughs> you have a lot of power back there with those guides. Better hear some of those names. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Right. And you can draw pictures on the screen now. You can do yep. so much. When you feel comfortable, can we zoom on something so I can try that out? Oh, yeah. Anything you want. Pick your poison. Find, find a nice coral. Okay. I just, of. oh, here, I see one. I'll be choosing rocks let, soon. <laughs> let me know when you're ready. Yep, go for it. Yeah, 
Yeah, that focus is nice. It's not too sensitive. Back, Coming out, back out. Yeah. Cool. There's just a screen of like a hundred starfish in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> See stars and I. Why are you seeing like a hundred starfish? Because I'm in Steve's chair. Oh. <laughs> Those are from all across the Pacific Ocean, so you have to f kind of pick the ones that are relevant to this okay. area. This one's cool. Go for zoom again. Oh, that's right. That's my job now. Yeah. <laughs> Just for a little while. Stop down that iris a little. Yep. There you go. Cool. Go wide. All right. Great. We've got a question for video, Steve. You think you can handle it? <laughs> Wait, I'm I confused now. I know, <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> Who does this go to? <laughs> oh, but the question is, are there auto settings on the Zoom? Or on the camera to click and have it go to a defined setting or are you doing all of that kind of manually i'm just gonna sit here and watch both of you decide who's <laughs> no. so gonna answer that Those, the zooms <laughs> no the zoom is all manual that you could there is an auto iris button um but zoom and focus are all manual on that controller and it's nice if we have actual controller. It's not something we have to operate from a mouse and computer screen. It's or mouse and keyboard. It's all right. Nice. I, th I think I'm gonna be ready to hop back there because we're Roger approaching that. the depth that we're gonna start looking for rocks. Thank Roger. you, though. Way to go, video, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why all of you in the front row are wearing long pants. Also, is it, is it cold out there? It's, a, it's got a it's got a little bit of a yeah nice breeze blowing through. Oh yeah, that's why you wanted to come back because you were cold, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Science, Steve, can you remind me what elevation we're looking for rocks at? Yeah, so we're gonna start looking um, in about. 10 meters or so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, might just let us settle this move and then poke around from there as Argus settles out then. No. I just wanted to ask to zoom out in high pack. <laughs> 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 <I don't know. laughs> Oh, there's a acrobatic snail. Falling. I was drinking my whatever tea soup. Tea soup. What is what is your tea <laughs> soup? <laughs> Josh is over there shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> That's nothing new, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> nothing has changed. <laughs> I have miso soup instead of tea today. Oh. And I'm really feeling quite pleased with myself. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Tried to find Steve's snacks back there, but I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> we can send those around. That would be great. Oh, I hope this bamboo coral is another one of those like ridiculous ones. What are you doing, buddy? Oh my buddy? gosh, it's look still at going. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are good. so fun. Those are really good. I like this stage of the snacks because it's easy to get to these caramel ones. <laughs> I 
Yeah, on um, on some other ships I've been on, the uh, science row equivalent has their own camera controls, which are distinct from the piloting cameras. And um, so the scientists actually get control over um, at least zoom and focus. Uh, not so much pan and tilt. That still uh, um, has to be controlled by the pilot. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it. I kind of like, you know, when I'm analyzing the video, I really appreciate like the fluidity of the motions um, because sometimes it can be jerky when the scientists are working on the controls because you know it's either very sensitive and you know you overcorrect, overzoom, or the the focus just takes too long. You know you, the focus can get lost sometimes. And that has to be manually reset. So I don't know which, um, you know, I guess if, if you're sitting down and looking at a particular coral colony and you want to do like intensive zooms and, you know, scan the whole thing, it's great for scientists to have control because they can go to exactly what they want to look at. But yeah, it's it often takes more time because, you know, we're not trained camera people. Yeah, we've we've talked about that a lot, and it's um, it's almost if we're to apply that to the the system, you're almost talking about building another ROV because you'd want to give you want to put that camera in a place that gives it the best opportunity to get the best imagery, but at the same time, we need to be able to pilot in a way to also give you the best imagery. So you need a separate separate cameras. There's not a ton of room up front on Herc for adding cameras that also can pan and tilt and give you all the flexibility. And uh, something that I've I've pushed for. So I think it'd be cool to have both. Um, but I just it's difficult to be able to integrate into this existing system in a in a way that is powerful enough to kind of warrant making that big of a change to the vehicle itself. But I think in future, it's definitely, if we were to build another vehicle, that would be something that would be something yep. I think I'd like to prioritize. All right. Eyes peeled for rocks. OK, I where are we going to find a rock, <laughs> Steve? Right there. <laughs> um, eyes peeled for the rock that you want. Yeah. Um, Still trying to figure out how big of a rock I want. I think the sweet spot is 10 to 20 centimeters. Okay. How about that one? To the right of the lasers. Yeah, so maybe okay. maybe some of this material. Mm. Okay. Well, it looks like a lot of it looks like collapsed crust. Um, and you're not interested in collapsed crust. Um, you know, I I think we just want a good sized rock just to maximize the chances of everyone being happy. Okay. Maybe. I think we one can do that these. here. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking at. Or even this one. So Max, we're looking for the rock that will maximize happiness. Yes. You want the rock to give joy. Achievable. Yeah. Josh, you want this one? I kind of want to avoid the dinner yes, plates. I, I mean, the dinner plates are very interesting. Flat, thick crust, but I don't know if there's a lot of datable material in that. They're pretty heavily altered often. The one right below the lasers right now looks so good. Yeah, it's a good size. My second choice would be maybe something like that. 
That one looks pretty angular. Are you an auto X Y S? Nope. That'll do. Yeah. Can we image it on three sixty? Do we have all the lights on? Yeah, we just gotta adjust the camera a bit. Roger. It's gonna come up a little. Forminifera and sediment on top. On the bottom side. Steve, we're gonna do a little bit of um Switching salvos here. Yep. Here. Roger that. Okay. Underside, pretty, yeah, white white dots. Not sure what those are yet. All right. I think we can stow. Where do we want to go with this one? Small box, maybe on the starboard side. Uh, bio starboard bio box B is completely open. Um, might also fit in D. Sample salvo. Yep. This is sample number. This is sample number eighty-eight. Eight eight. Eight eight. I'm not going to touch anything right now, but let me know if you need uh, Argus dash somewhere. Uh, sorry, which little boxes were open? Uh, go for Bravo. Bravo. Roger. Yep. Okay, ready for dive salvo? Sure. Okay. You can do your routing magic video. Roger. And I want to do a water sample as well. On my way. I think we have... Uh, uh, one through three are open. Um, video, can you re-expose us for the Niskins? Thanks. Can you just change to the Niskin? Yes. Let's go for three. It's blue. Nice. You got it. That was a very no drama sample. Yeah, I was very impressed. Nice. That's what we aim for. No drama. <laughs> we could create some drama, could break some stuff off, could beat up some <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so what are we going to do with the rest of our us. time? We could stir up a ton of sediment. <laughs> <laughs> break a rock and see if we could see how thick the crust is. <laughs> Go off DP. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, I think we can probably... Um, takers. <laughs> Josh really wants to break a rock. All right, I got a rock you can break. Uh, this one actually looks kind of Oh, neat. yeah, you want to try? Yeah. Sweet. I talked him into it. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at that one as a candidate, actually. Sorry, uh, I didn't see the circle. It's behind uh, the, the, the wrist right now. It looks like a small... Uh, 
Maybe not so small, this thing. Uh, okay. That looks oh, yeah. breakable, right? I'm going to find out, I guess. This is so cool. It doesn't take much talking to get me to do things. It's just it doesn't <laughs> take much talking to get any pilot to pick up a rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually pretty hard to stop them. I think it's kind of stuck on there, I think. Maybe not. Yeah, it looks not part so. of a bigger rock. Not getting the right so easy to grab. You did say he wanted to break it. Not getting the right angle here. All right. Well, let's move on. Okay. Sad. Steve, if you ever want to come back in this chair, we'll teach you how to switch cameras and uh, <laughs> mix the audio as well. Yeah, <laughs> mix the audio. <laughs> Lesson two. <laughs> Pretty sure we want to make it back to the surface in one piece. <laughs> so I, I don't know. Uh, Do you think you could break the vehicles from the vi video chair? <laughs> Everyone's always intimidated. No, but you can contribute to it. <laughs> Everyone's intimidated by the kill all button. Oh yeah. Oh, I love that button. It's that's a high drama button right there. It is. It's very red. <laughs> I know. It's just like asking to be poked at. Uh -huh. Bridge now. Shocked I have an accident. Do you guys still have the Mountain Dew button? <laughs> no. <laughs> Been ready to get underway Dew again. Button. Can we go 100 meters, 065? That didn't make it into the new van, huh? Thank you. Uh, uh, what am I missing on my. Oh, I'm missing. Uh, what was that? It's one? Argus Camp. Or, sorry, that's that should be Dash down there as well. Oh, really? Dash. Yeah, just one more thing to route. Okay, we need a Dash on my. Oh. Lower left. Or just anything that isn't color bars, basically. Mon, what is that? Mon four? <sighs> Might be three. Okay. You're pushing so my... One, two, uh, oh, three. Yeah, Mon three. I guess I could do that, right? Yeah, I, you could do that. I can do that. Do it. Get oh, in there. Oh, man. What do I do again? Here, it's... Here we here, go. Mon three. Back. Yep. Hip. What is it? ROV camps. PIP one. Oh, so I pip one? Yep. That's on your map. That's the one, right? That one there, yep. Yep. So I want that one, that one, and then I pick my camera. Yeah, go to so ROV cams. Source cams. ROV and the orange button there. Uh, oh, this one here. And then I'm doing Argus Dash. There. Nice. Yeah, I was trying to find that over here on my panel. But that's good to know it's easy to find on yours. I got a winch. I think Science Steve should come and fly Herc next. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just move you around to each I've, seat tonight. I purposefully avoided that situ situation. <laughs> like I like to say you have Science Steve doing every seat tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get a check on that? Yeah, I think we need a check on your camera position there. Or uh, Thanks. Yeah. I actually think it's a this problem. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Still a camera right. position. I'll, yes. I'll come up there and fly Herc if you all come down to the lab and help write dive reports one day. Oh. Sure. I got my own dive reports to write. <laughs> I need to write your dive reports, too. I very purposely don't have any dive reports to write ever. That's a bad deal. I still think you should fly Herc, but that's a bad deal for me. It's very fun, Steve. I, I'm sure it is. Sure it is. I don't think it. I don't feel like it detracts from my appreciation of the corals either. I feel like I get even more appreciation from the corals of the corals. That's what I mean. Mm. I've learned a ton about corals this cruise. This one on the lower left had might some some barnacles on it. Okay, if Argus would stop pulling on me. You gotta wait. Oh. You have to wait for him <laughs> to move. 
Oh. He <laughs> <laughs> can't pull the whole ship. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I got places You're like, let's to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, we're two and a half kilometers down. <laughs> I got places to be. Steve wants me to look at this coral. Exactly. So you got all the time in the world to get a beautiful pirouetting okay, shot okay, with blah, 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 black blah, blah. in the background. You make both Steves happy. <laughs> <laughs> This is why I can't pilot. Because <laughs> I would the backseat drivers. Very objective focused, just going for it all yeah. the time. Yeah. I mean, there, yeah, there's many styles of piloting. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's all of the styles. I don't have one yet. I keep absorbing the style of whomever I'm with. It does take a while, I would say, to yeah. develop your own style. Like, I would say at least a thousand hours. Okay. Wow. There's, there's, I'm like a there's so fifth much of the way there. There's so much nuance to like yeah. play with. It's yeah. Kelly, if you want to come try this chair, let me know. Come try that chair. Yeah. Oh, I'm so scared. I'd offer it to Kate. And Ashley, but I don't feel confident in doing anything correctly at their station. So. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Then you can just read all the comments. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, I'm. I think I'm actually supposed to look at this coral, right, Steve? Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned about the white dots on the coral. I think. Okay, go for zoom. White dots on it. Yeah, barnacles. Barnacles. Oh yeah, I do see some barnacles. Where do you see this? Oh wait, what, what's that underneath? Oh wait, no, it's just a branch. I thought it was something behind. It's full zoom. Okay, thanks. Oh, I see the branch. Yeah, actually, the yeah. Oh, I see because the polyps are facing towards me. Yeah. And those lower branches. Okay, go in. All right. Thank you. To try and keep ourselves entertained. We're not stuck with the diversity of corals that we see on our typical watches, so we're gonna have to find our ways find ways to entertain ourselves. We have a fun comment and question from a viewer in Germany uh, who says they've been following our expeditions for a couple years now. Um, and are ins it's inspired them to go back to university next year to study biology at 33 Aww. and hopefully explore awesome. the deep sea, um, so cool. which is very exciting to hear. They're wondering, do we know of similar operations that are based in Europe that they could be tracking? Oh. Kate? Kate? Um, well, I'm trying to think what is out in Europe. Do you guys know? Europe? Uh, in the UK, there's the ISIS vehicle. That's the UK's, uh, um, the, the government's system that they run, like similar to, yeah, similar to other, like, like Canada has its Canadian Scientific Submersible Facility. Uh, Dave Turner, he runs the ISIS system. There you go. Look up Dave. And send him an email. <laughs> Is uh, it Ocean X in Europe these days? Um, we're in, yeah, we were in the North Atlantic all last year, but we won't be there next year. Oh, okay. Um, or the following years. The Polar Stern, but they... Do they have a sub, sub I don't on board? think so, yeah, they're just the uh, they're icebreaker, yeah. yeah. But the cool thing is it doesn't really matter where they're based. That's right? true. The ships go everywhere. So, yeah, Polar uh, Stern is, goes down to the Southern Ocean. And yeah, it's a German yeah. ship. Yeah, they do Arctic so Southern Ocean, just like make that crossing nonstop. Yeah, if you're going back to school, you know, internships, you can look at OET's uh, internship program as well. You can go to the website.